Oh my God. Whew. Today is August the 12th, praise the Lord. And we greet you in the name of Jesus from First Crown Ministries. And we are happy to be here on today. Today is um, another day that the Lord has made. We are excited. We glad to be here in it. Um, things have happened over the last past week that literally um, took my breath away. And um, I had to, to, to get myself together. But today, today, glory to God, it's a new day. And um, I just want to say that we lift um, Apostle Clara Lawrence's family up in prayer um, as we get ready to lay her to rest on tomorrow. But I also want to say to the nation, to the world, that whoever had an opportunity to be graced by her presence, I know that your life will never be the same because of the impartation that the woman of God has put in the earth. And I am so glad to and honored to be able to have said that I have known her. I have um, received impartation from her and I'm blessed that she was a part of my life. She's like a mother figure in my life and to God be the glory. And I pray in the name of Jesus that everything that's within me that I represent one, the kingdom of God well, and I represent her well as her daughter. Glory to God. So now let us um, open up in a word of prayer. Father God, in your name, Jesus, we just thank you today, God, for this is the day that you have made. We thank you, God, that you allow us to see one more day. We thank you, God, that you gave us your grace and your mercy, and it's renewed every morning, Father, and we tell you thank you. We thank you for our family, our friends, God. We thank you for peace, God. We thank you, God, for healing the nation, Lord God, as we begin to seek your face. We thank you for turning things around, God, for your good, that you may get the glory, Father. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done. And Father, we thank you for what you are about to do in our lives, God. We thank you, God, for breath. We thank you for wind. We thank you for strength, God. We thank you for activity of our limbs, Father. We just bless and we honor you all today. We ask God in the name of Jesus as we just humbly come before you for this Bible study this Thursday night, Father, that you open up our ears, open up our eyes, God, open up our vocal cords and our voice, Father, that you touch our hearts on tonight, God, our brains, our minds, our spirits, oh God, that we, God, will be in the right place that we can hear and receive the word of God on this night. And we'll forever give your name, honor, glory, and praise this. Do your holy, righteous name. And we bless you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, kind Father. Amen. Man, to God be the glory. We pray that God touches our heart and our mind and our spirit on tonight. We're going to go right back into Nehemiah chapter 10. I'll give you an opportunity to turn to that as I try to mute this phone. Glory to God. Nehemiah chapter 10. We're going to go down to about verse um, 28 or so. We're gonna read 28 to the end, I do believe. Glory to God. <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter 10. Glory to God. Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Nehemiah 10, 
and 28. And the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the nephonims, and all they that had separated themselves from the people of the land and to the law of God, their wives, their sons, their daughters, and everyone having knowledge and having understanding, they clave to their brethren, their nobles, and enter into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's way, excuse me, God's law, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe and to do all the commandments of the Lord, our Lord, and his judgment and his statutes, and that we would not give our daughters unto the people of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. And if the people of the land bring way of the victuals of the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, and that we would leave the seventh year the exaction of every debt. And also we made audience for us to charge ourselves yearly with the third part of the shackle of the service of the house of God. <clears throat> for the showbread, for the continual meat offering, and for the continual burnt offering of the Sabbaths, the new moons, the set feasts, for the holy things, for the sin offerings to make an atonement for Israel, and for all the work of the house of our God. And we cast the lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people for the wood offering to bring it into the house of the God, to our God, out of the house of our father at times appointed year by year, to burn upon the altar of the Lord our God it is, as it is written in the law, and to bring the first fruit of our ground and the first fruit of the fruit of all trees year by year upon the house of the Lord. Also the firstborn of our sons and our cattle as it is written in the law and in the firstlings of our herd and of our flocks to bring to the house of our God and to the priests that minister into the house of our God. And that we should bring the first fruit, excuse me, of our dough and our offering and the first fruit of our manners of trees, of wine, of oil and to the priests to the chambers of the house of our God and the tithe of the ground and to the Levites that the Saint Levite might have the tithe in all the cities of our tillage. And the priests of the sons of Aaron shall be with the Levites. When the Levites take tithes and the Levites shall bring upon the tithe, the tithe, the tenth of the tithe unto the house of our God to the chambers into the treasure's house for the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the corn of the new wine, the oil, and the chambers, where are the vessels of the sanctuary. <clears throat> and the priests that ministers and the porters and the singers, and we will not forsook the house of our God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the reading of the word. Um, <clears throat> I got a lot on me today, a little bit little bit scattered but we gonna do this what i love about nehemiah and we talked about from time to time and over the last couple of months about how god took his people who did not know him uh into the promised land that he had already promised their forefathers and in this it talked about him building up the people, which was Ezra's job. If you go back and read the book of Ezra, Ezra talks about how he built the people up. So when this time came, what Nehemiah did was gave an addition to what Ezra had done, even though was, they were not able to construct the walls. Glory to God. But God allowed Nehemiah to come in and begin to build up what was torn down. And in this day and in this season and in this hour, we need the presence, the anointing, and we need to be able to walk in the authority and be able to decree and declare that whatever state we have been in, <laughs> that God is ushering in his presence. He's ushering in an anointing to build up what has been torn down in our lives. Glory to God. 
we stopped there and we parked there for a little while and we dealt with that over the last couple of uh, months, but then God took a turn on us and they began to celebrate. They, they had a festival of booths and it was talking about glory to God that they humbled themselves before the Lord and, and, and how they expressed their gratitude and thanksgiving. And then it talked about them going into a place of repentance because through and by reading the word of the Lord that Ezra was able to read and instruct them, they began to determine and began to see the way of their era. And so through and by that, God had allowed a repentance to come over the people and they began to show him their sorrow of how they realized that their ancestors way back then had missed the mark. Mm. And as God began to show them that um, we walking into this place now where we see another turn. And in this turn in chapter 10, and, and the reason why I didn't read all those names before, because there's a lot of names. <laughs> and you could go back and read them yourself. But in the beginning of that chapter 10, it began to talk about all the people who had decided to um, come into one accord, one mind, one spirit. They began to separate themselves in chapter 9 unto the Lord and uh, they began to remove the foreign people and the foreign things out of their life and out of their uh, situation. And so that was a big thing because they was all intermingled together. But in this season, God is calling us to do a lot of demarcation, if you will, a lot of separation, oh glory to God, so that not only will you know, but people will be able to identify that there's something different on your life than it is on other people. The line of demarcation is not so you can say you're better, you're greater, you're saved, you're this, you're that. Your line of demarcation is a marking in this season so that you, hallelujah, will be marked for a purpose and that the people who don't know God, hallelujah, like you do, they will begin to know to come to you for prayer, for intercession, Mm. they begin to come to you because they know that you're going to lead them into the things of God. Glory. Let me stop. And so in this process of time, they began to draw papers up as a decree, as a covenant. And they made a covenant with God and a covenant within themselves. And that's when you're talking about what is a covenant. A covenant is an agreement that I say, I agree with you that these are the stipulations that we're going to follow. And in this season, that's what they was doing. In their season, that's what they were doing. They had said, we recognize our ways, but we're going to amend our ways. And in this amending the ways, we're going to come together and write a decree or a covenant between the people who sign it, the people who agree, whether it, was, whether it was a signature or verbal. Back in the Old Testament, a covenant was made by blood sacrifice. And it had to have a blood sacrifice in order for it to be met or agreed upon. So a lot of times they would take an animal, a dove, a pigeon, different little things, and they would basically cut the animal in two to release the blood. Mm. And when they release the blood, they would uh, stand on one side or the other side and they would make their decrees unto the Lord as a witness of what we agreed upon. And so in this time and in this stage, as we move forward in Nehemiah, we realized that there was no cutting of the flesh to make this covenant, that they began to write a decree and said, this is what we're going to honor and this is what we're going to stand by. And so in this day, in this season, this time, we got to be women and men of our word. Uh, what you say you going to do, hallelujah, we need to be in cautiousness and, 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 and our actions to fulfill every word and every deed that we say we're going to do in this hour. Uh, it's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and then not obey by the vow that you said that you was going to do because God is looking for a return. I'm going to leave that alone. So they began to make this vow and decree, and then they put stipulation on it. They said, 
Lord, if we don't do this, then this is the stipulation. So their oath was kind of rough as we, as we have read in the scriptures tonight. And it was a couple of things that they didn't make vows and decree with any and everybody. They made vows and decree within their assembly of people or who they were. I'm telling you that in this time, there's such a lie of demarcation that we've been set apart because God, hallelujah, is opening up doors from this pagan world. We have to remember as brothers and sisters in this body of Christ that, that we cannot operate in the same degree the other people operate on. So we got to make God our priority. And that's what they did. I'm so full. I don't even know where to go. I'm so full. I have so much to say, but I'm like, God, help me to slow down and maintain myself on today. God is calling us in this season to make him our priority. And in that, it talked about a first fruit and what they gave and what they agreed upon. And it talked about their devotion. And I'm telling you in this season, in this time that our devotion has to go beyond just attendance of church. Our devotion must go past um, just meeting together and calling that fellowship. Our devotion first have to come with your relationship with the Father. And so God gave me this 10%, this 30%, this 60%, this 100%. He said, some of us just willing to give 10%. In this day, in this time, in this season, that means we may come through them church doors or join a live, but we, we're not willing to make any sacrifice. And so he's saying, and some of us are getting around, we're getting good, you know, we come into church or attending a live or we reading our book or we praying to him a little bit more. He said, but in this level, we still need to go higher because he's talking about our devotion to the things of God. It's talking about our level of commitment. How far will your commitment be? Are you just agreed upon when, hallelujah, things are favorable for you and you're going to, and you're going to be focus and faithful when things are favorable he said but well, what happens when things don't become favorable he said you round it at that 10 and that 30 percent he said but he wants us to come a little higher and then he told me about the 60 percent uh, he said that 60 percent of us or in our heart or in our devotion to him was just, you know, we, we able to be constant in prayer. We able to be constant in reading our words. We able to be constant in our little fellowship and an encouragement from time to time. But he said he want us to be devoted. He want us to be committed. He want us to be sold out. He said, come a little higher into the hundred percent. Mm. And a hundred percent is, 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 is where we're talking about. Some of us talk about going Going into the holy, the holy, the, but it's a talking about being in a relationship where your devotion is uh, not to man, not to your material possessions, not to your money, but to God. Hallelujah. He's talking about making a sacrifice. Uh, and sometimes we think that we have made a sacrifice because uh, we was inconvenienced one, two, or three times. But he said, I'm going to call things to come so forth uh, to test you uh, just like he tested them. Uh, will you stand for righteousness? Uh, will you stand up when injustice is? Uh, will you do the right thing when nobody is looking? And so he's saying, what is your level of commitment? Uh, where is your devotion at today? He said, will you keep your promises uh, that you have made in this season, in this time, in this hour? You said, Lord, I will if you. Uh, and he said he has up hold his end of the bargain now he's looking for us and our devotion and our commitment to come forth God if you bless me with a job God if you heal my body God if you heal my child my son my daughter Lord if you open up a door then I will do he said he has fulfilled his promises
promises. Uh, and he keep on fulfilling his promises. Uh, he said, but your devotion, uh, he want to know if you're going to operate in that hundred uh, percent, in the hundred percent, hallelujah, of devotion. That's when you sold out. Uh, that's when he can speak a word to you and you obey uh, and you do what the father tell you to do. Glory to God. Uh, if he say go, you go. Uh, if he say speak, you speak. Uh, if he say move, you move. Uh, what level of devotion do you have in this season and hour? Some of us are committed. Hallelujah. But some of us are committed partially. We commit it when it's convenient. Uh, we commit it because we so concerned about ourselves. Uh, my four and no more. He said in this season, in this hour, he want to know will you be committed for the long haul? Will you be committed when it's favorable and will you be committed when it's not favorable? I have had to take a step and a look at some things in life on this week. Uh, glory to God, because life will come by real fast and it'll hit you real hard, glory to God. But even in that, God is like, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, he said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Uh, why are you toiling? Why are you wearing? Why are you stressing? And, and why are you walking around with anxiety as if you don't know what to do? Uh, they made a decree to follow after God. Uh, he said, and I've been having you to study. I've been having you to look. Uh, I've been having you to see. Now, what's your decree? Uh, are you going to stop when that brush did come or are you going to pick up and move forward? So I had to come to the end of myself and say, God, uh, this is my heart. This is my way. This is my intention. But Father, my devotion is to you uh, and you haven't built me to carry this. Uh, so I'm going to give it to you, God. Uh, hallelujah. When you said that you're going to fulfill the call, hallelujah, and forsake all, uh, he wants to know if you're going to be committed. Uh, they were committed. They signed a decree. Hallelujah. They made some oaths. Glory to God. And then he said, where your sacrifice said, glory to God. He said, I care for you where your sacrifice said, what, what, what you're doing, where your sacrifice said. So he had to say to them, or they began to say to him, God, we're going to give you our first fruit. We're going to give you our first fruit in everything that we have. Uh, we're going to give you our harvest. Uh, we're going to give you our jobs. Uh, we're going to give you our children. We're going to give you our harvest grains. And in and, and, and the grains, they had grains and wheat and barley and they had all these things and, and they even celebrate a time of first fruit of giving unto God what was due him first. Glory to God. And sometimes uh, hallelujah, we want to fix this over here and do this over there and it looked like we got more month than money been there. Hallelujah. But he want to know if you're going to make a sacrifice to him first. Glory to God. Be it your money, be it your seed, be it your children is your seed, okay? Be it your harvest, your food, what you going to eat. He said, take no thought in that. What you going to do? What you going to wear? He said, you thinking about too much of the earthly things. And I'm calling you to that 100% to go higher. I'm calling you to forsake all for the call. The call was that you put God first. Uh, Lord, I'm going to put you first. Uh, Lord, I'm going to do this. Uh, Lord, I'm going to do that. But then as time has gone on, uh, we put him to the side. Hallelujah. And we begin to do what we want to do, the way we want to do it, when we want to do it. And God is like, no, that's not what I'm calling for in this season. I'm calling for you, hallelujah, to make the great sacrifice. Uh, when we say sacrifice, Sacrifice. Uh, we think sometimes that's just fasting. Sometimes that's just praying. Uh, I have sacrifice. Uh, but he wants to know if you're going to go through, hallelujah, with the stripes, with the banner, 
with the with the confession. Uh, he want to know if your confession is going to line up, hallelujah, with your actions, your everyday life. Uh, hallelujah. Sometimes, the glory to God, you can go along and go around and your action and what you say and what you do not lining up. Uh, and he's giving us opportunity. Uh, he's trying to get a bride and a church ready to present unto himself. Uh, he said that when he looked down into the earth, uh, he want to see a reflection of himself. Uh, but we got to make some sacrifices. Uh, glory to God. And that's called, hallelujah, sacrifice might cause you to be up at night. Uh, sacrifice might call you to be encouraging somebody a little bit longer than what you expected. A sacrifice might cause you, hallelujah, to stand and be the example. And even when they persecute you, will you be able to stand? Uh, even when they say all matters are evil about you, will you be able to stand? Uh, what is the level of your devotion? Hallelujah. He was looking for them to make a stand and a stance. Uh, they took a stand and they made a stance uh, to stand on the word of God. Uh, they took a stand and a stance uh, to decree and declare what shall be and what shall not be. Glory to God. In this season, God is looking for us, uh, the prophetic people, to open up our mouth and begin to decree and declare this is what we shall have. This is what we shall do. We shall not take back, but we shall move forward. Hallelujah. God was taking them into a progression where they started from. It's not where they are now. God had to take them from one thing into the next thing. And what he's saying to us now that where you are right now is not where he intends for you to stay. Uh, this may be a parking place. Uh, this may be a upstate, a uh, 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 stair up. Uh, this may be a place of temporary situation. This is not a permanent situation. Uh, and so throughout this week, I had to learn uh, we sojourners on this road uh, and God has not intended for us to stay uh, in the same capacity that we have been in. Uh, it's time for change. Uh, it's time for a shift. Uh, it's time for a new dimension in God. Uh, and we can't stay the same uh, and expect for God to move. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I'm shifting. I'm moving. Uh, and I want you to be on this trail with me. Uh, we got to be like the five wise virgins. Glory to God. The Bible talked about 10. And we mentioned this the other week. Uh, 10 was 10 total versions. Uh, five was prepared. Uh, five was unprepared. Uh, but we talking about God getting us ready for a prepared place. Glory to God. Uh, and in this season, in this time, uh, we better, we better, we better, we needs be. Uh, hallelujah. Knowing what the will of the Father is for our life. Uh, we can no longer do the same thing and expect for him to move in a miraculous uh, in order for a miraculous move to be made uh, we gonna have to be in a different place uh, hallelujah your old stuff won't work in this season uh, he don't show us uh, he don't show us in the natural so it is in the natural first uh, so it is in the spiritual those old things and those old patterns are not gonna work in this season why he said behold i'll do a brand new thing uh, he ain't asking us uh, he telling us uh, if you can't see that uh, oh glory to god you better ask god to take the scales from your eyes uh, I told you that it might get worse uh, before it get better. But in this time of un uh, 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 instability and uh, having no security of uh, what the next is going to be, uh, God is letting us know to draw nigh to him uh, because he draw nigh to us. Glory to God. Uh, he's always been there. Our, 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 us. Uh, we got to recognize uh, the, that what he's calling us to do in this season 
season. Five wise are prepared. While five foolish was unprepared. They didn't make no decree. They didn't get prepared. They didn't make no next move. They thought things were going to be the same. It's a hope. It's a joke. And people are dying and leaving this earth every day. When are your senses going to open? When are you going to cry out to God? He said the other week or so, if we cry out to him, that he will hear the cries of his people. There's coming a day that we got to cry out to our father. I found myself saying, whoa, God, it's me. Hallelujah. I can't talk about what nobody else did and didn't do. I know where I have fell short. I know where I have missed the mark. And I begin to repent and tell him, father, help me not get caught on what I see in the natural because it's a supernatural situation. Glory to God. And you're not going to know in the natural, but you have to have a relationship with the father that he can reveal himself unto you. What is the level of your devotion? Glory to God. As we begin to be uh, fixated and focused and put him first. Uh, when you go back and read, uh, he was talking about them giving the first of their trees uh, and the first of their uh, harvest. Uh, and then he was talking about the prepared harvest, their dough, their grain, their new wines, uh, the oil, uh, which represent the anointing of God on your life. Uh, if you've been in a stale old place, there's a new refreshing. Uh, there's a new anointing. Uh, that's what he does by his Holy Spirit. But unless you come in relationship and communion with him, uh, speak to him, talk to him, uh, joy, uh, uh, build a relationship with him, uh, you will never know the fullness of the joy or the oil or the anointing or his presence. Uh, we talk about worship and we think that worship is a sacrifice uh, unto the Lord that we just say, oh, Father this and Father that and we bless you. Uh, it's more than just articulation of a song. Uh, it's your whole life should be worship. He said, how are they going to know you separate Hallelujah. Bound and by the oath that you have said. He said they're going to know you because of your devotion. They're going to know you because uh, not only you, you know, you're not super spiritual and weird acting, but they're going to know you because, hallelujah, they know you can get a prayer through. <laughs> They're going to know you because your love for the Father. They're going to know you because, hallelujah, when you would have done evil, you done good. They're going to know you because uh, you've been marked. Uh, They're going to know you because there's a charge uh, over your life. Uh, They're going to know you because there's a difference uh, and love covers a multitude of sin. Uh, They're going to know you because you're not prejudging. Uh, They're going to know you because uh, you accept them for where they are. Hallelujah. You can't uh, eat a fish uh, until you catch it. Uh, you can't catch it and you can't eat it until you clean it. Uh, oh, glory to God. There's a process in this thing. Uh, you trying to you trying to eat the fish, but you ain't caught it. You trying to eat the fish, but you ain't good at it. Uh, you trying to eat the fish, but you can't clean it. Uh, he said a person that wins souls is a wise. Uh, and we got to come back and ask God, uh, Father, give me the wisdom in this hour not only to win souls, but to execute every area of my life. It, it had been some things uh, that I had to rethink. Uh, it had been some things uh, that I had to redo. Uh, it been some things uh, that I had to shift from uh, because my mind was not operating in the mind of Christ. Uh, and God said, no, uh, this my child. Hallelujah. It don't matter if they saved or unsaved. All souls belong to the Lord. You don't have no heaven or hell to put nobody in but in this season if they come to you you better be ready because they coming they coming because they want to know the will of the Lord they coming because they want to know the word of the Lord they coming because they know hallelujah the way that they should take and God will give you a download when you make your uh, 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 devotions unto the Lord Lord I'm committed Lord I'm devoted Lord I forsake myself. Uh, it's been times this week that I ain't had no sleep. Uh, it's been times this week, uh, hallelujah, that I had to make a sacrifice. Uh, it's been time this week that I had to pour in. Uh, hallelujah. I want to 
wanted to give up. Uh, I wanted not to answer my phone. Uh, I want to do other things different ways. Uh, I was suffering and going through my own self. Uh, it's a time this week I couldn't even get out the bed myself. Uh, but God said, get up uh, and give me this. Uh, this don't belong to you. Uh, you trying to take actions in your own hand. Uh, he said, cast your cares. Hallelujah. Because I'm the one that care. And we got to get in a place. Uh, hallelujah. That nothing separates us from the love of God. Uh, hallelujah. And if you separating you from the love of God, shift you. Glory to God. And sometimes we looking at other people. They did. They said. They whatever, whatever. And you pointing this and all this here pointing back at you. Uh, God is cleaning up his house. Uh, he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. Wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle. Uh, we got to get the wrinkles out. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes uh, uh, we don't want no wrinkles here, no wrinkles here. No defining lines and we try to beautify the outside. Uh, but he talking about, hallelujah, that heart. Uh, and he want to make sure you ain't got no wrinkles in your heart. Uh, hallelujah. Will you do right uh, when nobody is looking? Uh, where's your level of devotion and commitment? Uh, hallelujah. We committed to the house. Uh, we committed to the car. Uh, we committed to materialism. Uh, we committed to the rings and the earrings and the necklace and the show and the clothes. Uh, he was like, can you be committed to the things of God? Uh, hallelujah. So in this season, Nehemiah, hallelujah, and his crew, because now he got a whole bunch of people riding with him. I love it. I love it when you can come together in unity on one accord with one mind, because whenever there's unity, one accord on one mind, the Lord always shows up and he always show out. I have never been a presence of a whole bunch of believers that God didn't show himself strong. And God is saying, even in this season, I want to show myself strong, but you got to shift your thinking. You got to shift your mind. You got to put it, be in position to receive glory to God. He said he's taking us from the 10 to 30, 60. Hallelujah. He wants us to operate in the 100 fold blessing. It's going to cause a sacrifice. Uh, stop putting your money in your belly. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Stop making sacrifice for every other thing and not putting the house of God first. Uh, hallelujah. Pay your tithes. Uh, pay your offering. Uh, hallelujah. Give your time. Uh, time, glory to God, is a sacrifice unto the Lord. Uh, whether it's devotion time you set aside or whether it's time you you have set aside that Lord, this is the time I'm going to devote to my sister. This is my time that I'm going to vote, devote to my brother to encourage, to build up. Uh, hallelujah. You got to set aside some time. There's 24 hours in a day. Hallelujah. 10% of that is two hours and 40 minutes. I, I don't care how you divide it. Glory to God. Can you devote an hour over here for prayer? Can you devote an hour over here for reading? Uh, can you devote a time? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To build up somebody. Glory to God. God is looking for us to make a sacrifice. Uh, hallelujah. And that shows him that you worship him. Uh, worship is more, hallelujah, than a song and a dance. Uh, worship is a lifestyle. Uh, and how you tell God that you're thankful and that you're grateful uh, by the way that you carry yourself. Uh, not in word only, but in deed. Uh, don't just be a hero of the word, uh, but be a doer also. Uh, we got to be able to work this word of God. Uh, in order for us to work the word of God, we got to know the word of God. Uh, we got to spend time in the word of God. Uh, and that's a part of your devotion to the father. God, hallelujah, allowed them to go through many things. Uh, hallelujah. And they come into a place uh, and he got a purpose and a plan. Uh, hallelujah. That he used back then. He got a purpose and a plan that he's using right now. Glory to God. He working out some things behind the scenes uh, that you don't even know of. Uh, hallelujah. And know that he's working everything out for his good, that he could get the glory over your life. Uh, you'll be able to stand firm and testify what the goodness of the Lord has done. Uh, today, hallelujah, as I was preparing 
Hallelujah. Just as a perfect example, I got a text on my phone from my dear friend. And my dear friend said, I got some stuff to share with you. Glory to God. And I was like, okay, well, I already knew which they were going to go or whatever, because that's just the type of friend I have. And that's just the type of way we talked. Uh, but she said, thank you, basically, because I know my body was healed because of the prayers that you prayed. Uh, and I'm saying, praise God, you're welcome. But all the glory belongs to God. God, he just use us as a vessel. Let the Lord use you as a vessel in this season and this time. Glory to God to show forth who he is. He's a healer and a deliverer. Glory to God. And you, you can look at an impossible situation. I face a couple of situations myself in my own personal body, but I don't take no thought. I don't even concern. I have and my family members ask me, are you, are you, are you, are you going to take care of this? Uh, oh, yes, I am. I, 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 I understand. I, and I got it. And I'm not slack. And, and I'm not, and God's not slack concerning his promises. Uh, he said he going to keep me. Uh, he said he going to protect me and cover me. Uh, and I'm not going to be uh, ignorant to the devices of the enemy to get so caught up with everything and I take care of myself. Uh, but I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to tell him I thank him. Uh, I'm going to praise him, hallelujah, until the day that I close my eyes because he's been just that good to me. My devotion, my commitment, my hallelujah, my, my giving him my everything in this season is where we at, glory to God. And I honor him and I thank him. That's a part of my devotion. That's a part of my worship. That's a part of my lifestyle. He's looking for your lifestyle to come forth. He's looking for your lifestyle to come through. He's looking for us. Hallelujah. Say, Father, it is written. It is written that I shall. It is written that I am. It is written that you are. Hallelujah. He's looking for reflection. When he peeked down, glory to God, he wants to see the reflection reflection of himself uh, as he looked through the blood, as he looked through the curtains, uh, when he see you, when he see a reflection of himself. Uh, hallelujah. We got to come up from where we are. We got to come up from where we've been because it's always another level. Uh, and I know we want to be dainty and I know we want to be perfect. I know we want to be thinking that we all living in 100 fold, but even in that is room for elevation. It's room to come up. Uh, it's room to expand. It's room to stretch our cords and our tents. Uh, he's trying to fill us. Uh, we got to make room. Hallelujah that he can. Hallelujah. God is our awesome and a good God. And Father God, we just give you glory on today for all the things that you have already done. He's the type of God that he moved behind the scenes and we don't even know that he's moving. He's a type of God, hallelujah, that will manifest his glory at any given time. He's looking for us to come in unity on one accord, to be separate, hallelujah, to put our priorities in order, put God first. Put him first. And as we begin to put him first, he's going to begin to show us the things that we couldn't even see, but was there all along. He told her, what's in your house? Hallelujah. And she said, I just got a little, a little this. Hallelujah. He said, go collect this and, 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 and get that and, and, and watch what I do. Hallelujah. And what I'm saying, not to go in the story, but the miraculous is about to happen, but you got to be in place to receive the miraculous. You got to be in a place of preparation that you can kill. If God tell you to cut it, cut it. If he tell you to move on, move on. Why? He's getting a prepared people ready. He only set them up way back in the beginning with the broken things. Did it look like it won't even going to come together? It looked like they didn't uh, have nothing. It looked like just a whole bunch of rubbish. But guess what? Over time, years, months, days, hallelujah, it was all about a part of the plan of God that he will work that thing together for your good and his glory. You can't see when you're in the middle of a situation how he is going to work it out. And it's not your business no how. Let the Lord handle his business and you stay focused on the things that he has called you to focus on. If he didn't tell you to put your little pretty hands in it, keep your little pretty hands off of it. Stay focused in this season. Don't lose 
lose ground. Uh, the enemy will cause you to be so mind boggled that you lose ground. Uh, and when I realized this week uh, that I was in a trap, uh, I had to say, uh-uh, today is a day that I come unlocked. Uh, you can work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. There is a reverence uh, that he's looking for. Uh, there's a sound uh, that's going to come out your mouth. Uh, there's a sound. Uh, it's not an unholy sound. It's a holy sound. Uh, he's looking for a devotion uh, in every area of your life. What do your sound sound like? Uh, do it sound like a sweet melody unto the Lord? Or, ooh, or is it something else? Uh, where is your level of devotion? Is the name hallelujah of this game on tonight? Because God, uh, he's ready. He's waiting on us. Uh, and that prepared place and a prepared time and a prepared season. But we got to be ready to receive. Uh, they made decrees. They made declares. Uh, they made oaths. Uh, they was committed uh, to the things of God. And they put him first uh, in every area. They said, God, we're not going to do this on the Sabbath no more. We're not going to sail on the Sabbath. Uh, we're going to do the year of release every seventh year. Hallelujah. When the eighth year come in, uh, we're going to let that feel rest. Glory to God, because we understand your principles. Uh, they didn't do this for no fame. Uh, they didn't do this for no show. Uh, they did this because they realized that the principles of God, uh, hallelujah, and God is looking for you to put him first uh, in every area of your life. Uh, that's your devotion on today. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus, uh, if, if you don't get anything else, or, or if I rattled on, glory to God, please put God first. Uh, Make him the head of your life. Uh, we say that, but then we substitute other things uh, and other people and other places uh, in spite of him telling us, uh, let me be first. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in this season, God is saying, uh, open up the door, you wise. Uh, open up the door of your heart, you wise. Uh, open up the door of your mind, you wise. Uh, open up the door of your spirit, you wise woman, you wise man, and let let me come in uh, because I'm going to give you direction. Uh, I'm going to give you peace uh, and I'm going to give you the victory. Glory to God. I know that we living in a time uh, we don't know what tomorrow may bring, but God already knows. He's the type of God. The Bible said in, in, in a summation that he's too wise to make a mistake. Uh, if you read his word, you'll see every time and time and time again, uh, even when they sent the plague. Uh, hallelujah hallelujah one time he said david what you want me to do hallelujah and david said don't charge it to these people it's my fault god he took ownership uh, and, and 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 the lord like a little while longer did he stay the plague is a certain type hallelujah of a sound of a release uh, of putting god first that can shift the atmosphere and a cause things that are not to be hallelujah how we say they're gonna be they're gonna be whole they're gonna be healed they're gonna be delivered they're gonna be set free uh, they're gonna be walking in the in the release uh, they're gonna be walking in a chicago of glory they're gonna be walking in the anointing not only they but you and me glory to god because of what we stand on which is the word of god because what we believe which is the word of god that we gotta walk into a new place uh, let go the old so you can receive the new hallelujah and make the lord the king the head of your life glory to god he is our king he is our lord he is our savior and in this season hallelujah tell everything else to take a back seat glory to god if you do not know my father my god and my savior in the pardons of your sin glory to god you can confess right now and if you're saving you miss the mark you can confess right now and ask the father to forgive you of your sins uh, your shortcomings your faults your transgressions and your iniquities uh, you can make a decree uh, you can make a 
oath and you can make a covenant with the father hallelujah today and say god i give you my life because i believe that you died for my sins i, I believe that you rose again that i might have life and have life more abundantly some people will never know the peace of god like you know the peace of god hallelujah but it's your job to to extend to them the love and the peace of god pursue peace with all man and sometimes you know people be doing all matters of things and you see you hear you experience uh, but that's okay that's their stuff that's not yours uh, don't take nobody else's baggage into this situation but you gotta pursue peace with all man that's a line of demarcation to let them know i'm not uh, against you i'm for you i'm for your life and your soul i'm for your mind and i'm for god uh, to overshadow and overtake you and to bring you from the uh, obscurity into hallelujah the kingdom of god uh, so in this season i admonish you to cry loud and spare not and let your friends uh, your enemies uh, your loved one know that jesus is the way he is the truth and the light glory to god and that light that he's using is using is you and he gonna shine right through you when you open up your life and open up your heart and let him ride on you hallelujah like he rode on that donkey glory to god will you give him a seat in your life uh, that he can ride hallelujah with you you know you see them little signs they say god my co-pilot no mm -mm, don't co-pilot nothing on me lord please drive because of a co-pilot i'm subject to take over i'm subject to do things in my own will in my own way but if god be your pilot hallelujah he can lead you and guide you into all truths even the things that you haven't even thought of even the things that you put on the shelf even the things that you thought it, you, you know i cannot do this or it's not the season and sometimes he's not saying it's not the season he's just saying not now they didn't think it was the season to build but he don't build it up in 52 days uh, god is about to turn things around and he's gonna turn around so fast in your situation but make sure your heart right make sure your mind right make sure your spirit right and that the will of the father be, will be made manifest in your life to god be the glory we pray that the father covers you we pray that the father keep you and we pray that the father bless you in the mighty name of jesus and we continue to give him honor glory and praise uh, because i'm looking for praise reports uh, and i'm looking for the greatness uh, hallelujah to be displayed about how god caused a change and a shift to come in your life because i believe that he's going to allow one to come in mind. Glory to God. And I thank you. We love you. God bless you. And good night. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And we bless you on this night, God. We thank you and we honor and adore you. There's no God like you, Jehovah. We bless your holy name.